Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. <laughs> Twitch. All right. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. I, I'm going to start with this. Thank you, Carbide. Oh, the cracking. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Why is there like a badly pixelated and green screen David in the bottom right hand corner? Uh, cause I, sh uh, it's, it's our fourth. You just get me twice. Hi, hi weird digital silent David. Yeah. Depending on how the intro goes, I may prefer that. <laughs> Gentlemen, start your engines. Gentle ladies, I prefer that engage one. retro thrusters. Children, strap on your jetpacks. Babies, begin UFO flight sequences. Segways, hop on your pogo sticks. Various forms of sentient margarine, take out the oars and get ready to paddle. Three tenths of last night's leftover pine to crack and rung. Get your skis on. Great grandfather's used hanky, hop on the trolley. Various assorted penguins, y'all best take the bus. The taxi's full. Shiver, pull your boots up. Nakara, embrace the warming space race and gird your face to move in place and spin because it's the relay station. We're going to strap some Saddles to Meese and hitch a ride. I prefer hey, the silent one. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> Welcome everybody to the relay station. I hope you just tuned in. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. <laughs> it was a great one. And at this like point, to, I'd like, like to, to say to... hello to the YouTube viewers. <laughs> I like to harass you, David, because it's oh. fun. Specifically, Django Low, who always timestamps when the actual thing starts. Thank you. <laughs> Someone's got it. <laughs> Carbide Edge and unmute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can stop doing the intros. No, are... we we genuinely no. love them, but we love giving you shit for them too. <laughs> they are yeah, exactly. they are quite difficult to come up with every week. Yes, but it stretches your uh, your your writing skills. So, yeah, and you always uh -huh. leave it to the last ten seconds before we go live. Oh well, yeah, and that ten seconds is very difficult. It's the <laughs> most work I do every week is that ten seconds before we start. Okay, That's everyone, you press the record button sometimes. I did <laughs> last week. Well, actually, I did last week, but I had some hard drive problems and it didn't didn't save. So, I did this nice. week. It's Yay. red. It's blinking red at me. That means it's good. I think that might. I think that means it's going to explode. Probably, very possibly. <laughs> um. Uh. Hi, Star hi. Citizens. The thing. Yeah. I. I think. I have been. Uh, all week I have done nothing but uh, work on a baby room, so I'm a little out of it. How, how are How are you two doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, they haven't canceled Star Citizen yet, so uh, you're you're in the loop. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. I I heard some rumblings that uh, it was supposed to be canceled a couple of years ago, and I'm still waiting on that <laughs> to happen. No comment. Did we go back in time five years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Oh man. Uh, actually, some some slightly unrelated news. Uh, I was just reading an Ooh. article that um, they they found more methane on Mars. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's interesting. That's uh, they they are retasking great of our time. They're retasking Curiosity over the weekend to uh, run more tests because it's like three times uh, higher methane output than they saw last time. Uh, for yeah. anyone wondering, methane is. Um, I mean, it's not deterministic of life, but it is something that life, life... produces. Yeah. Didn't they so... recently find um, <clears throat> Europa? The oceans on Europa share something in common with the oceans on Earth, which is another thing that it could support life, potentially? Uh, that was, I mean, on Europa too, but um, specifically Enceladus uh, had... Um, hydrothermal vents on the bottom of the ocean that they were able to, you know, say we know these are down there. And the reason that's interesting is that on Earth 
those are environments that a have no light they're very very deep in the ocean which there would be basically no light out there yeah um and b are extremely cold and c are absolutely teeming with life on earth there's tons tons of things living around them so there's a decent chance that if you you find a hydrothermal vent on Enceladus, for example, that it might have all sorts of critters living around it. So, you know. New source of seafood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just need to set up a space restaurant in orbit. Just tell them there's whales. Japan will find a way. Holy <laughs> carp. Whoa, that's a lot of wiggling. All what right, thanks, Miles. Ah, oh my goodness! Wiggling. Oh my god! Oh, t- <laughs> wow! Shiver, you have to join Thank in. Um, so I'm just gonna do this for the rest of the show. It's gonna make things kind of awkward, but oh. uh, I'm you just gonna say thank you very screen? much. It's greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could, you could, I could be normal and say thank you very much. It's it's very much appreciated, but uh, no one watches you. To be okay, normal. Ghost, you've now subscribed for two years. Jeez. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, th- thank you, Ghost. Um, you're crazy, but thank oh. you so much. Thanks to everyone, actually. Thank you so uh, much, everybody. Even if you don't subscribe, thanks for watching, because we don't know what we're doing. We just come on here and rant every week. Uh, I think I think we have a lot in common with everyone else who oh does God. podcasting. Type shows. Afternoon, Sly-Fi. Uh, Jesus. Do we need to do start doing impressions of Chris Roberts now? And say, <laughs> Thank you to all the subscribers. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, and uh, if they you really want some more, re- click the like and follow here. And uh, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god! Thank you, Mojo. Thank you. <sighs> what is that? Stevie Madman is subscribed for seventeen months. Thank you very much. Um, yeah y'all y'all are nuts uh okay um but we love you yes wow uh sorry i've lost we my totally, brain um we totally should get one of those things we need one of the inflatable you know arm flailing wailing inflatable arm oh damn no but that's what i'm here for so we should inflate you yeah <laughs> right, sounds good. <laughs> the co-pilot from airplane. Yeah. No, the autopilot <laughs> from airplane. Sorry. I wish we could afford a fourth cast mes- cast master, cast ma- <laughs> cast person. <laughs> well, if you tell uh, Jake to stop taking his job so seriously, we might actually have a fourth this weekend. Well, we could have got oh my, my friend Ingrid to come on, but she's got a puncture. I. Uh, I I will say uh, Jake has a valid reason to not be here. He's off picking up Dolvac because Dolvac and uh, Jake are now working for the same company and live in the same city. Dolvac just moved to where Jake is uh, because I don't know. It's just really, really weird. Really is an interesting <laughs> um, thing. Okay. Okay. See, We're... Carbide Edge brings up the best point of the year so far. Where is Melissa Estrada? um so i guess 3.6 is going off to uh to evocati uh yes it's been on evocati um it is we are on june 22nd and the patch is 79 percent complete so yeah um (laughs) that's not 100 Hopefully it's they not. can uh, they can make uh, it. We've got how many days? Like nine, including today. Eight. Yeah. So, do we think they're gonna? They might get it out to PTU. They're not gonna get it to live. Uh, what is missing? Um, missing. We have. Distribution and ecosystem improvements, uh, shield system tech replacement, uh, the performance optimization for this patch, um, the Vanguard Warden, um, and the black market economy is not done. Weapon attachments are not done, and the law system is not done. 
that's where they're at. They also moved ship rentals and the 890 jump out to a separate patch, a 3.6 point X. You know, yeah. Whatever. Uh, so what? Probably because those... the 890 jump is the size of a fucking moon. Yes. Um, what of those is furthest behind? Like, what is almost definitely not going to make it in? The thing that's the furthest behind right now is Shield Systems tech replacement. It's only 20% complete. So that's not making it. That's going to probably have to be moved over to another patch. I'm guessing at least a couple things will probably have to be kicked to... Probably that's 3.6.x patch. Yeah. Um, but I what I would expect them to probably do is just put it to uh, PTU um, next weekend. Right. Like, for everybody? Yeah. Okay. And then well, some... uh, finish it the week after. Some wave whatever. one now and Evocatia. Is it okay? I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know I'm not in right now, so it hasn't gotten to concierge yet. <clears throat> um, but uh, I actually yeah, just... they're working on it. I mean, things are difficult. This had to happen. Oh, I know it's happening. So. Game development. Yep. Uh, I, I'm i sort of with Ghost, though. I'm The thing I was most excited for in this patch is attachments, and uh, I mm. really, really want to see more of that. So if it's not in, I am I am the sad. Yeah, weapon attachments, I'd really hope if they could hold on to that, because it's something we've been waiting for for a long time. But um, the thing that I actually think is the most important, though, that is the uh, uh, hover mode. Yeah. For ships, yeah. That's I big. saw, I, I actually looked at a leak. I, I know you're very upset with me, David. I'm sorry. But um, I, I did look Leaks at, a, at a leak. should only be used but... in soups. I know. Um, the Constellations thrusters look pretty damn cool when it's landing. Yeah. In hover mode, yes. Anyway. Uh, okay, you know what? Dirk makes a good... I'm gonna... Ooh. Show and tell? Yeah, we're gonna switch over to show and tell. Um, it's a pistol. I'm not... Um, my Twitch is not working. Is everyone else working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just missed me on my end. Cool. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's a pistol. It's, you know, pistols are pistols. It would be. A lot of people seem to want the shooting range. That would be quite a nice addition. Honestly, yeah. that was the first thought I had is I'm like, damn, I want that range. Can we, can we have one of those? Uh, like, put a, put a shooting range on Grim Hex. You know? I mean, they like, they have it already right there. <clears throat> we don't need much more than that. Nope. Doesn't have to be super fancy. But I would really appreciate a, sh a shooting range. That'd be awesome. Also, this thing is ridiculous. I kind of love it, but it's also ridiculous. I find... I love the little animations of the, like, the front things. Like, you can see the, um, the muzzle flashes through mm -hmm. the vents. Love it. Um, yeah, their graphics team's pretty good. <laughs> well i i also i really liked um with the pistol you can actually watch the trigger discipline like the mm -hmm. the trigger finger is not on the the trigger until you click to fire and then it squeezes like i i like that little tiny like you know the guy in the animations team literally sat there going Oh god, I've got to do this for every single frame. Move a fucking finger. And he does. <laughs> and it looks yeah. lovely. It looks amazing. It does it looks great. It really does. Um their attention it's, to detail is pretty great. Yeah, it's 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 those tiny little details. Yeah. If if they weren't there, you probably wouldn't give a shit. But when they are, they like, oh wow, I really like that. That's yeah. it takes it that extra bit it's nice the, the, the trigger finger thing is not something i would notice 
except that it's like I wouldn't notice it not there, right? Mm -hmm. But because it's there, it's like, oh, oh, that's really cool. I like it. Um, again, I I have some difficulties. I really like the uh, the sparks off the roof when when shooting the SMG, like the the sparks mm -hmm. coming down. Beautiful. I I really have some problems being excited about like two guns per patch, though. You mm -hmm. know, the weapon customization is going to be important. And, mod yeah. and weapon mod and weapon modularity uh, later down the road, um, and yeah, two guns per patch isn't much right now. I, um, I still want to see like, are we gonna get like different qualities of items? Like, you've got one yes. pistol. We already, yes, there's definitely different qualities. Okay, I want that. That's more what I'm interested in because then you've actually got something to shoot for rather than. Well, I've got the pistol. I'm done. Oh, that was terrible, David. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did you get that one out of a magazine? <laughs> Sounds like you went off half cock. Oh, God. Oh, what have you started? I don't know. A barrel like... of laughs. Uh, just shiver, get a grip. We should have got this. Are you Mario triggered? <laughs> a pun off for like an hour and a half <laughs> I wish I could fit you with a muzzle <sighs> you so on to the next stop. one okay okay yeah uh, sorry where, where am I um, what's happening I'm waiting for you to switch to the next uh, show and tell yeah working on it okay um, sorry I was distracted by puns uh this i like yes um trains the trains are such a huge problem and they really needed more trains and i'm really pleased to see that they're going to add more train more trains and a system to dynamically make more trains if they need more trains that's important because you don't want them to have to go in and do it manually every time that they need more trains yeah Open yeah. Transport Tycoon Deluxe Wet Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, me and Shiver share that share an appreciation for that type of game. You know, I, I hate to say it, but once, or I mean, not once, but once CIG opens like a 7th and 8th dev studio, um, it would be really interesting to see a like city management game made in Star Wars. Oh, that'd be, that'd be so cool. Um, so, if anybody from CIG is watching, uh, I volunteer to help start the uh, the next Canadian branch of CIG. Yeah, put it in Ottawa. Or Calgary. Uh, there's nothing in Calgary. Ottawa is at least has a hockey team. Uh, I don't <laughs> think you're serious about that, but okay. Uh, Especially because they don't even play in Ottawa. <laughs> I know. Shut up. Um, what the puck is going on? <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, you're right. You're right, Shiver. We should really stick to the script. Um, just checking. That, that is our goal. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. I don't know. Trains I think we crossed good. a red like... line here. Oh. We're going to skate over it, though. It's all over, my friends. <laughs> okay. Persist <laughs> Persistent damage. This is awesome. I was yeah. so excited to see this. Love it. Inheriting the UV2 map from um, the original ship. So once it goes into its damage state, it still has all of the damage on it, which is awesome. Thoughts, Shiver? Are you going to be excited to see Shiv written in the side of the ship after you blow it up? <laughs> no, my luck is just going to be a sh... Oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it blew up before I, I could get the V in there. <laughs> I, 
it's it's amazing tech isn't it just being able to dynamically blow up any part of an existing model it's not new don't get me wrong but it's rarely used because of the constraint placed on a game end so being able to actually have this in is so cool i i think it's awesome well i think it's gonna be a, a lot of fun it's also important for like once there are more like they're they're shooting a, a 300 series there is it yep yeah good yeah. 315p um, it's a tiny ship right you, you can't get too much like wear and tear on it you can't get too many like different battle scars but when you start getting something like uh, a connie or an 890 jump that goes through a battle and has like a really know. great I, example, a great example of this is going to be the Vanguard because it is designed to go in first yep. and get the shit kicked out of it and then be able to get out yep. even if only half the ship is still remaining. So, you're going to have these Vanguards that like come out of battle and there'll be like big chunks missing off them and like yeah. like the freaking um what were they the um, the flying fortresses, what are they called in World B War 2? B17 yeah, and they would come back and they would land and they'd just be like, you could see through them. So many holes. Um, and, and, and they, they figured was, um... that those the holes were the places that didn't need reinforcement because if they kept flying... Did you hear about the ghost Lancaster? Uh, no. There was a Lancaster bomber and the, the plane was made so well as well that this plane actually landed itself it came in there was no one on they, they had to abandon the fucking plane because they thought it was gonna blow up. no it came back <laughs> it landed itself. fine my uh my grandfather actually flew uh lancaster oh, in the war really oh, wow. yeah That's he was shot cool. down and uh spent the war in a uh uh in a camp and uh when he finally got out he actually had tea with the queen oh cool wow that's an interesting history. Yeah. Jeez. And then he went on and founded a uh, conservation group in, in Ontario and planted a million trees. Um, anyway, I, I think that's pretty cool. With the battle damage thing, I, I can't remember which stream they talked about it. Hey, but, um, <laughs> but one of the tropes from Wing Commander was when you got, you know, depending on how messed up your ship was, you would have this, you know, couple of bullet holes or something like that. It was always, you know, a set animation yeah. or something mm -hmm. whereas this you're going to be able to get out of your ship afterwards squadron look at the battle damage and go jesus christ that close to hitting vital system and it's it's cool or something more of the point really call over your buddy for. and go call over your buddy and go see this hole right here was when the merlin shot me and then i fucking blew <laughs> well I, that's something i'm really excited because we've got derelicts in verse right yep I'm really excited for larger derelicts to go to one and to be able to start piecing together the story of what happened to that ship from the mm -hmm. damage that is on the ship that has stayed on the ship from the battle that destroyed the ship in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what I think happened here was someone shot it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the creepy ones will be the ones that you find that are totally fucked Fine. up and there's nothing wrong. Yeah. With the exterior of the ship, and it's like. But those those are going to tell. What happened like, here? <laughs> they're going to start telling stories. I I think this is great tech. I love it. Yeah, great, great, great. Uh, what do we got next? Oh yeah, this one's this one's just really pretty. Um, I love this one. It's so pretty. It's I a pretty really looking impressed. gun. I was really impressed by the effect on the back. Of I the love the weapon. ventings out the, the oh, weapon. Oh yeah barrel again tiny details yeah but yeah the whole like glow on the back and how it changes depending on how hot the weapon is is super neat. i'm also really excited i i think it looks really cool but i actually don't like it as a two-barreled weapon i really want to see it up to a four barrel okay i think that would a, a four barrel one of those would look amazing but uh you should uh you should forward your suggestions on to uh, cloud imperium games but we but you work for them yeah, could not you actually. Put, could you just put two of them on a hammerhead on the turret there, and you would, would 
Yep. You would you prefer to see it more of a one, two, three, four sync? No, I want to see one, two, and then side and side, like top, 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 bottom, left and right, in yeah. like a a, a plus. Mm. You know. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I think that would be super sweet. Um, Maybe the larger size ones do do that. I, that that's, that's cool. what I'm thinking. Like, this is a nice one, but then as they go up in size, there'll probably be, like, more. Because it looks... Like, the the model of it seems really easy to add another two, mm -hmm. right? They've already got the model. You might as well just expand it. Anyway. Uh, okay. Okay. This one's really freaking cool. And it looks like ass here. It's really cool. I like it. Um, The part of the, like... The dust inheriting the uh, the color of the ground beneath it, that's really neat tech. But it's also something that's not really needed in most games because you don't have that many ground colors. Whereas Star Citizen is going to, I mean, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. They can make all sorts of different things. It's cheaper for a company to just make one ground texture and then have one generic dust texture and then attach it to whatever rather than this where it's part it, the particles are being rendered with the GPU I think on this now mm -hmm. so they are actual physicalized particles that react or should react appropriate it's mad really cool <laughs> it's I, I, and again they you know it's very exa exaggerated here but like when you're driving over red ground it should the dust should be red not gray so yeah this is so the the theme of this <clears throat> week's cast and this week's uh inside star citizen seems to be the little touches right mm -hmm. like this is another one of those little touches that if you're driving on sand and it's kicking up the wrong color sand you won't really notice it that much in most games but well it's like it's like um uh bryce arena like there are there are a lot of AAA games that have been doing this or a couple that have been but i notice even in some AAA games now uh not for the particles but for sound and like the sound of what is you walking on what's beneath you isn't always accurate right. to what yeah. is beneath you you know mm -hmm. like they've only got so many sounds to work with so they they don't get it right all the time so i always uh, it's such a it's such a break in immersion when you're like running across like a metal surface and it sounds like wood and you're like yeah <laughs> what the hell it's just this is more tech that they don't have to go in and manually do anything, right? With this mm -hmm. tech, it Just will, all it, the yeah. particles will automatically inherit the colors of the ground below. So they don't have to worry about it. It's it's another tool to save money when they're creating, hopefully, 150 planets at a time because they really have to hurry up and make some goddamn planets. And it's in lo it's it's playing the long run game as well it's yeah. getting the, uh more core tech in now where it can re with whatever terrain you put down and recognize the terrain rather than saying right this is going to react with this and this. that'll do the ship that out the door next time we come to this kind of planet we have to do the whole process again. rather than that it's just going to be okay here's this terrain type let's hook it into the system yep just work it's good stuff what else we got oh uh, so, before I open this one, this one always kind of disappoints me. Stuff like this always kind of disappoints me. Because um, I've got nothing to say. Other than, hey guys, this looks really, really freaking pretty. And I've gotten yep. really, really tired <clears throat> of saying over and over <laughs> that, hey guys, this looks really pretty. Because I feel like I've got nothing useful to say. Because I don't. Because, guys, it looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. Also, very foggy world we're going to be living in. Yeah. But 
You know what? You know what I mean? Very humid. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean. They uh, continue to produce uh, excellent, excellent quality effects and graphics, and in this case, lighting. It's amazing lighting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially <Light> for... Uh... <laughs> nice. <laughs> it looks like... It does look like Shiver's been vaping everywhere. Uh... <laughs> um... That's all. That's all of the vape from the uh, seven years Star Citizen's been worked on. <laughs> all just shoved into there. <laughs> uh, no, not funny. Uh, it, this I liked looks, it. <laughs> it looks almost as good as you'd see in like a pre-rendered cutscene. Like the the way the lighting oh, yeah. is baked or not baked but like the the way the lighting is done looks and the the atmospheric fog effects it it really does look like um even even as soon back as E3 they had their uh AMD I think had their like this is a guy walking through a hallway with a weird shadow crow thing as like an example of what we can do that's pretty i mean this looks almost as good, and it's not pre-rendered and pre-baked, right? Yeah, it's it's it is genuinely nuts what CIG are accomplishing on a graphics and a technical front. I'm still really hopeful that they can start getting some of the gameplay fronts in there because, again, today, uh, no talk on gameplay, just lots of tech and things looking really pretty. Someday, maybe gameplay. Someday. Um, and then uh, the Merlin looks really pretty. Oh, it looks so good. They did a nice job sprucing up the Merlin. Yep. Um, and the funny thing is, the the uh, the thing I liked most about this whole thing was the rusty one. Yeah. I don't like that. it full rust, but like mid rust, it looks really cool. I just, yeah, as I told you guys before the show, I really can't wait to find one of those like just somehow abandoned and derelict on the side of an asteroid somewhere and just totally all rusted, rusted to shit. Be great. So what I want, and it's something that's been part of friggin' Star Wars, uh, Firefly. Star Wars again, I think. Um, like like so many different science fiction movies, films have done it, but I want to go to a used vehicle dealership and find some rusty ass old ships. Like mm -hmm. they've been sitting out in the sun and the rain for a decade, and some alien bastard is selling them for, you know. 20 UEC because he's got 700 ships in variable states of disrepair, right? Uh, that's going to be cool. You know what I you know what I was thinking of when I saw the rusty Mer Merlin was um I've uh, you guys watched DS9? Oh yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Um there's a great episode where uh can't remember who she's with but kira goes and finds this old bajoran fighter on one of the moons it's like underground she's with dax she's with dax right oh yeah she is because yeah because dax freaks out with the spiders um and uh yeah so they like there's this like old mothballed bajoran fighter on this moon <laughs> they have to like beat the shit out of it to get it to fly and that was exactly what i thought of when i saw the like rusty ass merlin um <clears throat> and you know they have to, they like fire it up and it like catches on fire and yeah, I, I know it's, it's yeah, that kind of thing. I know it's not going to be really part of the gameplay in Star Citizen as much, but it one of the things that's a huge part in No Man's Sky that is also probably my favorite part of that game is finding a signal that there is a derelict ship over here on this planet. And then going and and finding that ship and fixing it up and taking that ship over, ship over, um, mm -hmm. and I know it's it's like completely different levels of of complexity and stuff. But 
there's something really fun about finding a derelict ship and fixing it up and being like, yeah, this is my new ship. You know? And I, I, yeah, I like it, that. that's, that's the, uh, that's, you know, still the dream with, um, the Bengal too, since you won't be able to buy it. Yep. There's always been that, like, there are a couple in the universe that are derelict. And if you have a, like, a hundred people, you might be able to get one up and running. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it's I, just, yeah. And not, not even so much for the Bengal, cause the Bengal is going to be stupid large, right? Like you need yeah. hundreds of people to get that thing running at least. I'm more interested in, you know, finding a derelict Connie and cause I don't mm-hmm. own a Connie. I'd like to find a derelict Connie in the verse and like. I'm the only person that knows where it is. It is crashed on an asteroid field somewhere. And I'm going to go through that, Connie. I'm going to figure out, okay, you know, pull off all the panels. These components are rotten. These components are rotten. Take them all out. And then do like 20 trips back to somewhere where I can get all of the components to repair the Connie Hope that no one finds me on the way. I'm definitely not going to tell Shiver because he would just sit and wait until the moment I fire up the engines and then he'd blow the shit out of me. I can see him thinking it right now. I'm I'm, I'm talking about how much I'd love this and Shiver's just like, ooh, I'd like to blow that up. Yeah, I know you, Shiver. I know you. <laughs> I would, you know, and the... the this is part of why I'm so curious, like to see how deep they can go with the game systems. Because I would even love it if, like, hey, this you, your Connie is, you know, crashed and or, or derelict and uh, all screwed up. You know, maybe it's missing a nacelle, and that nacelle is destroyed. Yeah. Well, you have to go get one. Well, where do you find one? Well, like somewhere like Dumper's Depot, where you have like, but maybe like out on like a plane on a planet where they just have a whole junkyard of ships, and you're like. I need the, you know, bottom right nacelle from a Connie and just go <laughs> rip it off and go fly out there and stick it on. Uh, <laughs> and then also, suddenly you come back to your own constellation, find that one of it is on brick nacelle missing. Yeah. <laughs> or that. That seems like a very I mean, that's that's what Jake's going to do. He's just going to fly around and salvage other people's missing parts to fix up his fleet. Um, I... I <laughs> Corda Mix actually has a great point. Imagine the war that the first Bengal found in the PU will start. Oh my god. It'll be just ridiculous. Like especially because you can't bring a scrapped Bengal into a protected system. Yeah. So you're out on the you're out on the raggedy edge, as Malcolm Reynolds says. <clears throat> well, um, and and it's persistent, right? A Bengal will not disappear when you log off. It is there all mm-hmm. the time. So yep. you're going to have to have, like, someone's going to find that. Yep. And one, they're going to be able to sell that location for oh, just everything. <laughs> Billions of credits. <laughs> hey, hey, test. Do you want the location, the verified location of a Bengal carrier, a derelict Bengal? I would can like. Can you imagine three... how many auroras they can fit onto a Bengal carrier? I would like three Idri, please. You get. <laughs> and then three... you go and say to explore. Yeah. Hey, I've got these coordinates. Yeah. Hey, I might as well sell it to everyone, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let them want deal this war with the to be ball interesting. Out. That's how you get really rich. <laughs> and then once they then go and destroy each other, walk out, never play again. Done. <laughs> no. Once you go there, once they go there and destroy each other, you just haul in there with your reclaimer and pick up all the pieces. <laughs> Imagine, no, that that's the sort of thing that could happen. And then you would be reading about it in a PC magazine or something. And then years later, you could sit back and go, yeah, I did that. that yeah, was- that was me. <laughs> That would be me. Imagine um, those people in Eve that have done all these things. They read this and go, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ask us some questions, people. Uh, I'm going to throw that in now. We've got a few, so thank you so far to everyone that's asked them. But uh, yeah, more questions, because we're getting around to question time. Oh, my God. Question um, time. 
So I wanted to point something out. Point. If that's point okay. away. Um, there's not like a there's nothing like huge and light earth shattering or anything on the roadmap this week, except they added a weapon. Oh yeah. They added a weapon called the Verified Off-World Laser Technologies Parallax Assault Rifle. So, <laughs> just by the name alone, I oh, want it. <laughs> That's right. Also, Verified Off-World Laser Technologies stands for Volt, I think. Yeah. So, it's going to be an electric... <laughs> it's a taser. It's a Tesla oh. gun. Oh, a you parallax know, assault rifle. Also, I have to say, Tesla made a flamethrower, and I really think that they missed no, they an opportunity. Boring, the Boring Company made a flamethrower. Boring Company, whatever. I think that there's a missed opportunity <laughs> there. Boring Company made a flamethrower. I want Tesla to make an electric gun that shoots Done. the lightning. I'm pretty sure they'd get sued for that, but all right. I mean, Boring is already a pretty close edge with Ben. Yeah, there you go. They also look the same. The the boring flamethrower looks kind of like a bearing gun. Yes, yeah, so it kind of does. Yeah, they they, they almost bit. have the same art style. Seriously. Anyway, oh, um, all right. Mm. It's called just call it not an electric gun or yeah. not a taser. Not a taser. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Not a ranged taser. Oh my! Oh God, Tez. Um. Okay, what else we got? That in pun Star did Citizen? have a certain ring to it. Though. It. It was good. Um. What else, uh, what, what else? What else happened in uh, in Star Citizen this week? Anything off of uh, Star Citizen Live? Uh, they made a murder scene. Um, and the weapon of choice for the murder scene was a turtle. So how did this murder scene work? Uh, it was at an ATM. A guy died. There was blood everywhere. Yeah. And there was a turtle covered in blood. Now, um, was this, was this like body. investigative gameplay? Not at all. Was they it were, the guy that this murdered is... this turtle wearing all this metal with like sharp pointed objects kind of marked? Looked a bit Japanese. Didn't murder the turtle. He murdered someone using a turtle as a weapon. Uh... Minerva posted, that person a rat? Minerva posted <laughs> no. in chat the uh, the link to the comparison of all of the uh, the bearing guns and then the boring gun. And yeah, literally it's like very similar. Like I I have to think from that that Elon like is at least aware of Star Citizen. It's, it's identical. <laughs> Especially to like the the P eight AR, even the muzzle is like this. Yeah, so close. Yeah. Um. Des is such a terror with those pen with those. Pen. So. Um. But yeah, it was basically just a. Uh, the the thing that impresses me most a... about Desmarius and his puns is is how snappy he is with delivering them. I Sorry, like Nakara, you were I saying like that a lot. Thank you. Star Citizen Live this week was about. Uh, how about how basically about how you dress a scene in in the game? So they basically just took a, like a blank hallway and created a murder scene at an ATM with like caution tape and you know blood and a turtle and a dead body and a giant hot dog. Why not? Exactly, that was their thought too. Shows good. Uh, and apparently, apparently the mustard is broken in the game right now. Oh really? So. They were quite sad about that. They're like, "Oh, we got it. We'll fix that right away." Yes, the mustard has been replaced by a replace me texture. <laughs> That's terrible because. Uh... So is the mustard on hold? Yes. Oh. They'll catch up. Hopefully. Tis the season. I'm gonna go to Have questions. You got a source for these rumors, by the way. Nope. 
Question time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I relish that. the day when we have a show with our puns. <laughs> That was, that was great. Oh, that one landed quite nicely. Yep. That was a perfect garnish. It, like, I'm, <laughs> my sides. I, it's, it's just, oh, okay. No. What would we do without Ashley? Ashley, like, keeps us in questions. Ashley is 97% of our questions. Yes. We Thank would you, really Ashley's be in a pretty pickle. rad. We would, we would really be in a pickle I would say without... radish. We'd be in a pickle without Ashley's questions. Um, it's all over, guys. This is it. Uh, so <laughs> the puns will kill me. I just. I, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question this week: Do you think we'll get some winter sports on Microtech? I'm actually inclined to say yes to this question. Um, might not be for a while, but I think they'll eventually do things like that for sure. And if they don't, people will figure out a way to make them. Mm. <clears throat> They'll be like gray cat skiing. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'd just be happy if you could have a snowball fight. That would be lovely. I would like that. It'll be interesting to see the little things that they allow us to do, like make snowballs and uh... yeah. I hope they include the physics. So if you like lay down at the top of a hill covered in snow, that you like turn into <laughs> a snowball. No, not turn into a snowball. Turn into I want, a, I want to be able turn to into a, a human toboggan. I want to be able to take <laughs> a snowball and roll it down a hill and see it get bigger by the end of the hill. That's okay. All right. They'll spend a year trying to make that happen. <laughs> All right. That's All right. Uh, that's the next stretch goal. Um, the next, next question is also from Ashley. Um, so last time you were quite adamant the, on that you don't think that there will be a level editor for electronic access. Do you please elaborate on that? Why would Wait. they need the level editor when they're going to be releasing full mod tools anyway? That's a good point. Maybe we're thinking of it wrong. Because mod tools are basically a level editor anyway. You, yeah, I would imagine that you could... You, you, it would be a failure if these mod You cannot make your own environments and things like that. What did Nightbot do? Uh oh, and did it eat people? I think Nightbot ate someone. <sighs> no, Verse was just timed out for five seconds. Oh, that's okay. Not very long. Poor old Versa. Sorry, Versa. Nightbot is uh... aggressive. Yeah. Where were, where were you trying to? Where were you trying to post, Versa? Don't don't make him post it again. <laughs> Oh, a clip. Okay, sure. There you go. That's what he was trying to put. Oh, okay. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you are. Um. Um. So I. I mean, so I'm gonna switch around. I think they probably will be a level editor, as if you mean mod tools. It might not come for quite a long time, but um, I think it'll eventually be there, and. I can't, I can't, because just because the community is is so creative, I can't wait to see what people actually try and pull off with that, like renting their own server and creating some ridiculous universe. So I think but. last week I might have jumped to the assumption of like you won't see a level editor for anything in verse because you won't, but. Um, now that I'm thinking about it more, and this is like, uh, I think you might actually see a level editor in game for the in game game. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. 
Well, Star like Marine. Arena Commander and Star Marine. Arena Commander and Star Marine are in game games, right? Yes, they are. So, yep. yeah, you know what? You might not see a level editor for anything in Star Citizen, but you might see a level editor that you can submit levels to for them to be used in Star Marine. Mm -hmm. The game inside the game. <clears throat> and then I think we'll also have, it's not the same as a level editor, but I think we'll have like a mini, uh, or at least a couple mini building sims for bases and also for space stations, because they yeah. did talk about a player owned space stations eventually. Um, yeah, so, sorry, Ashley, editors, I probably but... got confused last time. But I think there'll be something, but I don't really, I wouldn't say i would definitely think any of it would be there because it really depends on how the you know building of the game goes and how quickly they can get things out i i picture something like um really really old valve tech. i think it used to be called world hammer where you could create or you could create levels with the exact same tools devs use to make half-life level counter mm -hmm. Pain in the ass, but I would. I if we're going to see a specific level editor, I would imagine that. Yeah, I could see that, but that'd be that would be really cool. Mm. Uh, let's move along to the next question. Um, Ashley says, "Do you think we'll ever see Walker ground vehicles in the game?" Well, there's the um, Titan suit kind of Walker, but I would imagine that Ashley is talking about. Like at apps and at I don't think that they consider it to be a vehicle. I think they, at least, I don't think CAG considers it to be a vehicle. Um, and yeah, I think he's, yeah, I think they're talking like Star Wars type Walker vehicles. Mm. Um, Max. you know what? It's a pretty common trope in in science fiction, and they seem to try and honor a lot of science fiction as much as I can when they're making stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me overly. It might not come for quite a while, but they they have talked quite a bit about having ground wars, you know, between bases on planets and walkers would be somewhat helpful. Especially um, if you had something like a, like a really swampy planet, like a ground, a walker would be really helpful for it. Helpful in that sure. environment. Sean Tracy did help make uh, MacMorrie a legend. Oh, did he? Okay, then mm -hmm. <laughs> even more likely. <laughs> and he, he has gone on record and said, you know, I want to make a MacMorrie again with this end. And I, I think a lot of us that played MacMorrie were like, yes, yes, please. <laughs> I will say, um, I'm pretty sure we've actually technically already seen something akin to a walker in some of those mining drones. Yes, yes, the spider mining drone was the a walker. The spider mining drone has more legs than just two legs, but it is technically a walker. It's got like eight legs yeah. or whatever and walks around on them. Technically, yeah. Yeah, you're we'll, right. We'll see. Yeah, the, the spider mining drone is a walker. Yeah. Yep. It's not a military walker, but it wouldn't surprise me if they take that and modify it to be like a weapons platform. I mean, yeah. it's it's meant to be used on celestial objects, asteroids, yeah. and such. So I suppose you could call it a moonwalk. <laughs> Can you just walk that comment back, Shipper, please? Do you want me to spin round? Yeah. Oh God. Would you say that I was being a smooth criminal? No, but I'd really like you to backpedal. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> All right. Uh... Ashley asks, "Where the hell, is, where the hell has Lore Makers been?" Oh, I guess yeah. uh, the last episode was September 2018. I'm guessing it's discontinued. It was a great series, though. I love the. the I'm, they may have run out of material. That's also possible. I don't think they did, but or maybe I mean, it'll just come back they later. Had X amount of material ready, and they could go up September, and they've mm -hmm. exhausted that at their got lots more material, but it's not at such a complete stage where they could do law make maybe leading up to Squadron it will make a return to you know, bring the hype and then a yeah. bit off. If anyone ever wants to dive into Star Citizen a bit, that's actually a pretty fun binge watch. 
I, I watched a whole bunch of them in a row. It was really interesting. I know um, it's actually really good to watch if you want some of uh, the Star Citizen lore is the Astro Pub's. Uh, yes. He's got a guide to various different lore topics, and they're quite good. Uh, go Go look those up if you're looking to get some lore knowledge. Um, Ashley asks, and I think this is the last Ashley question. Would you consider nope, eating creatures from Europa? Yep. I'd eat creatures from Uranus. I mean, I'm adventurous. I'll eat, I'll eat creatures from Europa. Sure, what the hell? It might kill me, but... You know, that's what the doctor standing next to me is for. <laughs> I mean, oh, man. I I have to think that it wouldn't be economically feasible to send a craft to Europa to catch some f- European fish, bring them up, fly them back. Even if they were edible, one single piece of one of those fish cooked into a sushi would probably be like a billion dollars i know cooked into a sushi i'm assuming it has to be like a tempura fried (laughs) anyway it's like a a, um, a tempura roll i'm still i'm still i'm still envisioning i'm still envisioning tomato tomato you don't roll colonel colony Couldn't they just bring a couple of them back and go, let's Jurassic Park this shit? (laughs) (laughs) I know, Bryce Serena, I know that sushi is raw. I don't care. You know what I meant. God. I guess I'll have to educate you on the difference between sashimi and sushi. Oh, God. No. Oh, uh, I know the anyway. difference between s- sashimi and sushi because the yeah, because I told you it's not. No, I've known it for years. Do you know the difference oh, between that's... sushi, sashimi, and maki? I know that we should probably answer some Star Citizen questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, uh, I gotta, I gotta finish answering that question. Yes, I've always, go. I always envisioned this to actually be like a restaurant in orbit of Europa, not bringing them all the way back to Earth and landing. That seems ridiculous. Restaurant at the end of the universe. Yes, with a pig that suggests. Although uh, the I really, really don't think that Europa is the end of the universe, but yeah, I mean, it's really far away. But the next thing beyond it is really, 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 yeah. really far away. Yep. So, uh, Tilu slash Lanorth asks, uh, weapon attachment, uh, oh God. weapon attachments question. Silencers work for ballistic weapons. Will there be such a thing for energy weapons? Hopefully not. Um, you could potentially... Um, see, this is where I see an opportunity for the tuning mechanic or reduce profession. the damage output. Uh, yeah, and also reduce the the um, yeah the amount of noise it makes. Um, and uh, yeah, I could definitely see that being an opportunity for tuning, for sure. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see it as an attachment that you can add on, but I no. I would prefer it as a lower the damage output on your weapon, lower the like the power draw, mm-hmm. reduce the sound, fine. And that's where like you could get somebody who's really good at it and maybe they don't have to lower the damage output too much to get, you know, the Something volume down. Sounds. Yeah. I also hope that um I really, really hope that in Star Citizen silencers work a little bit more like they actually do in that they're still really fucking loud. Yes, they're just not as loud. Yeah. Um, they don't uh, reduce. The, they don't reduce the noise a lot. I was thinking exactly the same, Bryce. But they're not technically lasers in game, are they? They're not act because if they were an actual laser gun, it would just be a. You wouldn't even see the casting, which mm-hmm. would just be where it hit. 
these are like laser encased bolts or something like that. Something. Or... Who knows? Yeah. You gotta love science fiction, don't you? <laughs> yeah. They're plasma blast ish things because. Yeah, it's something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Plasma they're, makes They're an sense, energy based gonna... weapon. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Um, actually, if you ever. Um... Plasma's kind of neat to watch. Uh, if you're ever watching a um, nighttime SpaceX launch, you'll often see plasma along the along the booster as it comes back into the atmosphere. Yeah, and it's really cool looking. Uh, Bryce Arena says that silencers only reduce the sound to hearing safe levels. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I'm pay playing through uh, Wolfenstein Two right now. Actually, a phenomenal game. Like it's it's really fun, but. I will say it really does annoy me that I've got a silenced pistol and a silenced SMG and I can shoot one guy in the back of the head from 10 feet away and the guy beside him won't hear either the silenced gunshot or the guy that screams Bleh! as he dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Uh, Miami Bat. Yeah, stealth is broken in that game and so many others. Um, yes. I don't, I, like, if you're going to have stealth in a game with guns, the guns shouldn't be part of the stealth. Add a bow or a crossbow or a repeating crossbow. or That's actually a, a really good idea because, like, a bow, you, could, you can actually fire somewhat silently. ESPRG, I hate you. And I'm going to prove you wrong by making sure that I finish that damn game. I'm you gonna really should have put a time limit on that ES of Tina. Because he he's going to spend the next 10 years going, did a level. Yep. Um, <laughs> next question is, do you think that eventually you could figure out the ship and weapon loadout that was used to shoot down a now derelict ship? I think it's possible depending on how unique that loadout and ship was. Because there are some fairly unique loadouts in Star Citizen. Um, not a lot of them. I mean, if you have a Super Hornet with pretty basic weapons on it, it'd be pretty hard to, you know, determine that that was what the ship was. The do, you, do you think um, <clears throat> so energy weapons will leave a scorch mark around the impact hole where uh, kinetic speed the, the impact hole. I think you will be able to tell whether it was kinetic or, or energy, but um, determining but like what ship it came from, unless they give you tools in the game that are like scanning tools where you can maybe that's what Ashley meant here is like you know, investigative tools to try and figure out the scene of the crime, so to speak. Mm. Um, I think that's a possibility, but just seeing it like your own perception it'd be pretty hard um i i have to chime unless in unless it was unless it was super unique i, I have i have to chime in here because there's some talking in chat about uh bows in star citizen and i do want bows in star citizen mm -hmm. w and then uh desmarius uh made a pun uh saying i want bows as in bow uh french b-e-a-u uh actually what i want in star citizen is Bows, uh, which is a local Ottawa brewery. Uh, I want Bows in Star Citizen. Hey, Bows, give Eris free stuff. And that's a ten million dollar <laughs> advertisement right there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. It's sitting in my fridge. I had to do it. Um, Bows is also really, really good. So. Uh, well, we're here. I drink so much Coca-Cola that at the toilet, <laughs> I have to think to myself, maybe I should have put that on an edge. But I love this. <laughs> ah, God! <laughs> Please sponsor me. Um, okay, we've actually got a lot of questions. Thank you, everyone. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, the next one is no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Square Peg. I can't dab for us or for you. I'm not uh, 12. No. What what is that? It's it's I, the new YMCA. Don't do it. Just move along. 
I do uh, quite love I do quite love this person's username though. Bat Erotica. Uh <laughs> out of curiosity, what are your feelings about Beyblades? Oh, Aren't God. they great? Um so I actually got uh uh, mini heiress a beyblade uh recently because at christmas all she wanted was a beyblade and we got her some other stuff i didn't want to get her a blade and she finally got a bay you know what actually no i didn't get it for her she used her own money to buy a beyblade because she really oh, wanted well, she's a young now that's forgivable oh she's but it's just a spinning top oh i know so it is oh, she, she so got it, it fucking is it's not she, even a nice sure, spinning top. sure it's not even sure. made of something good it, you get metal spinning top that spins forever oh yeah okay fair sure. enough the side but sit there and it's not fucking fine. fine she got she got the beyblade right she wanted to spend her own money on it fine she bought the beyblade i think she like let it rip like three or four times and that was it never touched it again yep are you surprised? Yeah, that was worth no. making a fucking cartoon for. No, I'm not surprised. I mean, they're useless. At least Pokemon cards look cool. Um, Miami Vampire asks, how about Pokemon? Oh, God. Uh, we, had to one... we did the Friday Night Show last night, and Nitro was sat there talking about Pokemon for 47 fucking minutes. And I'm sat there going, I don't care. I really don't give a shit about your Pokemon, your Trouser Monster, or your Muck Monster. Just shut up. I don't care. Shiver. Stop. Pokemon is awesome. Oh, uh, fuck. It has been awesome since I was in grade school. It will continue oh, being awesome forever. Uh, the Pokemon oh. movie is really not very good. Uh, Detective Pikachu, not great. Uh, but Mini Eris loved it. Um... And I am actually really excited for the new Pokemon game. It looks to actually change up the formula a little bit, and uh, I'm going to get it and play through it with Mini Eris. And now let's Pokemon. move on so yep. Shiver doesn't crack. die. It's just crack. It's just Shiver, keep you buying love stuff. Crack. Keep buying our stuff. Keep buying our stuff. You want some stuff? Here's some free stuff. Now buy the more stuff! You love crack. You should be all over it. Uh, I love your crack. That's very different. Which one? I've got many cracks. Vetus asks, if you log out from a ship, is your body still there? If a crew all log out of a Bengal, can you kill the crew of a ship so that they can't log back in, excuse me, and take over the ship? Uh, if you log out, your body, your body is, is, is gone. There. Yes, it, it goes away. But Sorry. Which, does beg the, which does beg the question, what happens if you fuck that Bengal up while they're logged out? Will they be, next time they log in, they'll be in a hospital and go, Oh shit! Or, 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 or they'll going, just oh shit! Or they'll just spawn at the nearest space station. Probably that. And they'll one. be like, "Fuck!" Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's so there's still quite. I don't know if they've actually a hundred percent settled on what's going to happen. But let's say you're in a Connie no. and you're flying along, and you're mid travel. You've got a destination point. You're traveling, and you decide to log out. While you're under attack. Oh, Logovsky. Your ship is not going to disappear immediately. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think I think mm -hmm. right now, possibly, it, I don't know if they've got that fixed in right now. I, I honestly yeah, don't they know. Yeah, they won't let you log out and, and you know, survive. Your, you may log out. Yeah. But your ship will persist for X amount of time. Five it's, minutes or whatever. Yeah. Not... Not sure yet on amount of time. It might be five minutes. It might be until you're out of danger if you were in danger, something like that. Um, but they do not want you to be able to log out and avoid the consequences of getting fucked up. I have an answer for the next question. Uh, the, the next one is from Fastcart. Which actor or actress would you most like to see in Squadron 42 and why? Okay, go Nakara. Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Why? <laughs> First thing that came to mind. <laughs> Why? Okay. Sure. I got two. Go ahead. Uh, Malcolm McDowell. All right. He's amazing. And he was in Wing Commander 3 and 4. If you say Melissa Estrada. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was also going to say... Don't say it. Don't say it, Shiver. <laughs> so did you, you, Estrada. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, oh. 
Um, I have another one that's very sincere and not as off the cuff. What's that? Uh, I really, I know it's maybe a little cliche, but I would really like to see Nathan Fillion. And uh, especially because he does a lot of game uh, voice acting and stuff already. I would really like to see him. You know who I would actually like to make just a bit part? Somewhere. William Shatner. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Definitely. You know what? I would really like to see William Shatner in just a couple of lines throw away somewhere. I like Shatner. Uh, other other options are people like Terry Crews, um, uh, mm-hmm. Frig, what's mm-hmm. his name? Um, Drax from Guardians. Oh, uh, Bautista. Yeah, Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista. Um, uh, any of the Chris's. <laughs> totally literally any of the chris's chris evans chris pratt you know chris pine like, uh, chris hemsworth chris fine chris hemsworth yeah. there's so many All bloody chris. chris's um yeah uh but you know who what i would like most and i don't think this is rowan atkinson happen. that'd be that cool. would be great uh i'd like someone a little more comedic jack black oh God, kill me. Dave Tennant. I love I love Jack Black. <laughs> um, uh, Dave Tennant would be uh, fantastic. Uh, um, yeah. And also, Bill um, Murray, I, yes. I Bill really Murray, enjoyed yeah. uh, I really enjoyed Good Omens. I recommend people watch it mm-hmm. on Amazon Prime. It's not on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I love that petition. Oh my god. Okay, uh, let's go. We got we got a lot more questions. Okay. Um, the curious cockroach asks, "If you had control over Jared for a day, what would you do with him?" Uh, I don't get control over Jared. He gets control over me. He picks me up and, and carries me off. Do you have that image, actually, Nakara? Oh boy. Uh, I'll see if I can find it in our chat. Um, yeah, there it is. I just want to see a tour of the um, studio that, in America. Where do you want me to put it, dude? Uh, in our chat. Okay. There you go. Uh, give me a second. That's a good call, desync. And Rick and Morty. Uh, 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 do you want to actually throw in the other one? Just just for shits? Okay. Um, so, Nakara was recently going down uh, memory lane. And give me a second here. I'm going to bring us over to memory lane. Because, um, well, I mean, because memory lane is fun. Uh, so... Good. Here's the first one. Uh, this is uh, Disco and me a couple years back. Uh, you can see Disco quite clearly. Um, yes. And there's me. <laughs> um, you look like a bit of an ass. <laughs> uh, I, I am a bit of an ass. Uh, so this is, it's actually, Bad News Baron was streaming this live as, as Disco uh, picked me up and, and carried me around. Um, which which I quite enjoyed. Um, and then uh, there's also this one, which is, is pretty good. Actually, Nakara, can you get the image uh, from this week that Desmarius found? Oh, God, why is which, it? Which Wait, one what? was the time he carried you off on his shoulder, ran off screaming, oh, yeah. ha ha, I'm the relay. Uh, that was another one. So Disco has this thing where anytime he sees me, he puts me over his shoulder and and runs away with me, uh, which is great. Um, this you might not be able to tell. This is me. Passed he was out, asleep. Fast asleep uh, after yes. arriving. He did in not wake LA, up for that. Uh, in L.A. for Citizen Con, and uh, the rest of the 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 relay crew or INN at the time uh, decided to stack. Um, card games and dvds on me because i was just passed the hell out uh it was yep. quite good that was very well mannered to be honest yeah i thought they were um, so there's another another really good one from this year's citizen con or this past year's citizen con and then I, i'm so you can actually on uh on robert space industries twitter uh when they when they tweeted out uh, that the tickets are now on sale. I thought this was kind of cool. Um, not they, on sale yet. Not on sale yet, but that they're that they're going to be on sale. 
Wait, why did that one not save? Oh, that's because it's... Uh, sorry, just give me a moment. I'll fix the okay. file format. The file format's really weird. Uh... Give me a second here. Like... Yeah. I, uh, does here Mario in the meantime... This, here's, an, here's, an, here's a new one. Here we go. <clears throat> also, yes, yeah, CitizenCon uh, 2949 uh, Wave 1 tickets um, next Thursday and Friday. Um... 600 tickets in total in four different, you know, slots. They, uh, they posted, uh, an image. This, this was the image for the tweet of the, uh, the tickets going up and you can see here, sun jammer, myself, Jake, six F's in caps. There's a pop. You can doll definitely back there. see, you can definitely see a doll back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was, was kind of cool. Like it's, this is me at citizen con. Mm-hmm. Darge took this. It was. It's a. It's a good. It's a good photo. It was a That's good time. Fantastic. Um. Anyway, I I thought that was was really cool. Um. Okay, where are we? Back to questions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Arena asks, anyone watched the latest fan video, The Man from Nowhere? If so, thoughts. I did not. I have not. My entire week has been baby rooms. Um, I'm very, um, I don't know. I sometimes really enjoy and go seek out Machinima, but it's pretty rare for me. That's just a personal thing. Uh, Coffee asks, do you think that CIG should make Star Marine and Arena Commander esports ready, and should they make them free to play? One. No. Is it One. They should be made free to play. Yes. Two, they should be made playable first, then free to play. Then CIG can think about allowing an esports, esports stuff, to yeah. grow around it. You don't force I mean, esports. Normally, like Unless back in Blizzard. the day, back in the day to make a game esports ready, it had to be like perfect. But then PUBG became an esport, e and it's a freaking disaster. Yeah. So it's kind of like, eh. <laughs> yeah, the, sure. The thing happens. is, make the game, make <laughs> yeah, the game absolutely. good. And if yeah. people want it to be an esport, they will make it so. Don't force yeah. the esport, because if you force the esport, you end up with uh, things like Artifact. And you end up wasting a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, Fastcart asks if CIG were to sell, a manu sell manufacturer based sneakers like Misc, Anvil, etc. Uh, what what price would you buy a pair? Uh, I wouldn't because I don't like sneakers. I would buy a pair at the price of a normal pair of sneakers. I wear normal <laughs> shoes. Also, I'm still waiting for the Misc branded keyboard and Hotas. Um, yeah, well, the company that was supposed to make those got eight eaten. So eight. yeah, but I I'd, I'd like to see them do something with that at some point. Agreed. Lord Palpatine the Wise asks, once Star Citizen introduces lightsabers, who will be the first person you cut in half? Probably <laughs> myself. Um, the NPC I'm trying to buy something from and it'll be entirely by accident. <laughs> Showing it off to all my friends going, look at this. Oh, it's backward. Rip. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The Curious um, Cockroach asks, if you could tell Cristiano Roberto to put one bug in Star Citizen, what would it be and why? Uh, honestly, my answer has to be one of the bugs from um, Starship Troopers. I think that there are... Shiver, did I take your answer? Yes. Yeah, I did. Anyway, continue going. No, I I think that the the bugs from Starship Trooper have great uh, great character mm, design. Fair enough. They fair are enough. they are frightening and still very buggy. And doing that sort of a game in Star Citizen would be a lot of you know where basically a horde mode. Horde yes, mode that would be pretty fucking cool. Horde mode with like 
you've got a base and there's just a swarm of them coming and you have to repair the base as you go because there's going to be repair because there's like hand repair as you're fighting and they can burrow oh. in underneath so you've got to lay down something or you've got to weld door shut. do you remember the um concept for aliens colonial marines that was a really cool idea where you actually had tension and skill and you could do things with the engineer that's what i yep uh um... probably won't happen but that would be cool I'm going to say, um, if you're going to intentionally put a bug into a game, I'm going to say time loops. That's not a bug. That's a feature. Yeah. Well, no, it's a bug because the, the time accidentally resets. Um, the Curious Cockroach asks <laughs> but I, would, I would love to see what that, would, what that would turn into and what people would do with it. I think people would have a field day. Yeah. What about the bug where if you do a barrel roll, you're invincible. <laughs> I like that. Um, I actually think that for April Fool's someday, they should revert the code that um, they, they never, we never actually saw it, but they were saying that for a long time, uh, CryEngine would think that space <laughs> was underwater. <laughs> and I think someday, someday for an April Fool's, they should just revert that zero to a one and have all of space fly like it's underwater. Yeah. I we'll think that'll be in submarines. I think that would be <laughs> hilarious. Yep. Hilarious. I would be, I would support that. Uh the curious support. cockroach asks, uh, what bug type alien race do you think would fit in the Star <laughs> Citizen universe and why? Uh so That's I'm a good actually, question from Curious Cockroach. I'm gonna Crotch uh, spiders. I would like to talk about the one type of bug that I don't want to see in Star Citizen. That? And that's spiders. I don't Good luck. I don't want to see giant cave spiders. I don't want to see giant asteroid spiders in in asteroids. I just I don't want to see crop spiders. Bug, I know they're an arachnid. Shut up. They're buggy. I don't want to see spiders. Buggy. That's not very nice, sure. Why would you say a thing Where's like it? that? I was nice. That's true. Um, I'm am... going to, uh, I'm going to, um, you know, suck up to our commenter and mm. say cockroaches. No, hang on, you're all wrong. Shiver, you haven't even said anything yet, but you're wrong. Crotch spider. Wrong. Shit. We need, we need tardigrades. Oh yeah, of course. No, you get sued. But also not a bug. How would you get sued? People who are watching Star Trek Discovery get it. They're basically, someone sued Star Trek Discovery because there were some similarities between using a tardigrade and a couple of characters, and he said, you ripped off my entire book. You're not uh, aware of that lawsuit? No, no, I was not aware of that lawsuit. I, I've oversimplified That's it there. really funny. But... Yeah, I don't think they'll win. <laughs> I I I don't. Also, uh, just as a quick aside, go and try and find. Oh, some it was videos. a video game. Sorry, Dodge. You're right. Go go find. No, some... it, no, it, no. It wasn't with the exact plot. If you go and actually look, it. go and find some videos of tardigrade feet. They have the cutest little feet. They're all these like spindly things with little suction cups. At oh, so cute. Tardigrade feet. Love them. Uh, friendly Neighborhood Spider asks, If Star Citizen had a planet filled with constellation-sized spiders, would you visit it for an adventure? Incorrect. I would yes. crash a Bengal into it. I would, I would sell my house for the Bengal and then I would crash the Bengal into that planet, fracturing it in two, and running those people, spiders, whatever, putting them extinct. They're gone. No more of them. They're done. That's it. The end. You could use those giant walkers to stamp on them. <laughs> Meta. Um, uh, Darge asks, uh, when are you inviting me back on the show? Have you become too good for me? Well, I invited everybody on the show twice and no one responded except for Haramis like five seconds before the show. So, uh, 
about thank, an hour thank, ago. Thank you to Hermes <laughs> for uh, for offering to come on last yes, minute. Uh, I much. actually said no for the the only reason is. I did not want to resize the windows because I've <laughs> resized them for three people. And I was like, I don't want to spend the time resizing them for four now. Thanks for the offer, though. Uh, we kind of did only have like 15 minutes till we went live. So it was only 15 minutes. Close. That's not enough time. I had to write my my intro. Yes, and yes your intro it. that you always write at the last moment. Yeah. Um, But Darch... <laughs> uh, how about next weekend? <laughs> uh, um, okay, two more. We've got time for them. Let's do it. Fastcart asks, speaking of lawsuits, do you think Amazon will sue Netflix for trying to cancel Good Omens? <laughs> they should, just for the hell of it. It'd be hilarious. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty great. Fastcart says, Eris, save the sizes as presets. Fastcart, don't tell me how to live my life. I will make the dumb mistakes that I choose to make. Um, <laughs> oh, your boy. your your attempt to improve the efficiency of this show uh, will fail miserably. <laughs> it will fail so miserably until I'm gone. Because in October there's going to be a baby, and someone else is going to be running this for a bit, and then you know what maybe some some improvements but until then i'm gonna continue <laughs> running this as the clusterfuck that it is sounds good i am sorry i'm so sorry sergeant jock itch has a question yep i'm curious, I'm curious as to what everyone thinks about amazon lumberyard laying dozens of devs off and canceling all their games using the engine also why is this not a big deal since it was a big deal when amazon lumberyard was used for star citizen yeah that's not good news i didn't i hadn't heard that it was right around the time of e3 i think oh good they only had a couple of games only one of which i had seen which was the like MMO, uh, colon, like colonial MMO kind of thing, and I couldn't try it because it was only available to people with Amazon Prime in the United States. Um, New World, thank you, Miles. Um, I I would imagine that Amazon has just decided that there's not money to be made in in that. They don't. That's not how they want to make their money, so they're not going to do it. Uh, what it means to CIG, literally nothing. Even if Amazon's Lumberyard engine disappears today, CIG will just say, hey, our engine is now called Star Engine, whatever. Like, it, it mm -hmm. they were just... It, 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 it's not a big deal that Amazon are doing this, just the same way it's not a big deal for CIG when Crytek laid off a load of staff yeah. because separate companies they might be they might have licensed but they don't rely on amazon or Crit for their tech they've basically hired these people anyway that said um it absolutely sucks for the devs that get laid off uh mm. there's a a veritable problem in the video game industry right now there are absolutely no protections for workers it's a real real problem devs can be laid off for no reason in seconds with no notice and they have basically nothing to go on that's that's not the way it should be um i don't know how much there is going on i know a couple of of people are talking about it here and here and there but uh game workers really should unite in in some form of union to start having you know bargaining power and start having some sort of say in the work conditions that they are subjected to there are a lot of companies that do lots of good things cig is really good to their devs um uh i i, I was really really impressed by nintendo uh delaying animal crossing specifically because they didn't want their devs to have to go through intense amounts of crunch um mm -hmm. Nintendo actually lost a fair amount of money on that. Shareholders were really, really angry with them. And that's the kind of thing that it, it takes something more in a company to say, no, we're not going to do crunch. We're going to delay the release. It's a problem with the industry as a whole. And I really hope that if something 
something does start coming up of of games workers starting to unionize that we as consumers of the pro- products that they make start supporting them if if a bunch of devs that are making a game try to unionize and the company lays them all off i would hope that we as as consumers won't buy that game hit hit also, the publishers where it hurts in their pocketbooks that's the only power we or the game devs have and at the end of the day those game devs are human one of the greatest parts about star citizen is watching the people making the game and visiting different devs every week and and the inside the verse uh, inside star citizen shows are great it's there's a th- there was a clip in this week's of like someone else walking by and be like, Hey, I'm going to feed you while you're doing this in like they're, they're having fun and that's what it should be about. And it's, it's, we, we need to support that. So I hope that everyone agrees. Uh, sorry, Nakara, I know I cut you off, but you know, I wanted to rant a little bit. That's okay. Um, I mean, It doesn't sound like they're getting rid of the engine and it doesn't sound like they canceled all of the games. Some of the games were canceled. Some of them are coming out. Um, I think one of the things that I think is a big oversight is that Amazon is just really new with making games and they, they have an engine that's really good at making single player games and they really want to make multiplayer multiplayer games with it. The reason star citizen works is that CIG has built the whole multiplayer section of it themselves and bolted it onto the engine um but lumberyard doesn't have that piece they don't have any rights to it so um i i think that's where it's falling down is every one who tries to use it has to build the whole networking piece themselves one would hope that at some point cig so, might sell them that piece but well we'll see or license it themselves yeah. as a yeah i don't know uh sergeant jockich says good, that the good uh, question Yes, that uh, the devs laid off are still going to work in other areas of Amazon, and they they <laughs> themselves said the engine wasn't a good engine for multiplayer games, and that may be the case, mm-hmm. um, especially if the devs are going to work in other areas of Amazon. That's good. I uh, it, the the point itself still sa- stands. Um, there are a lot a lot of problems with with devs. And, can I? Yep. Yeah, go. Can I answer the next question? Oh, is there another? Whatever we get to. Yep. Yeah. Derpinator asks, how much did you laugh when you heard, oh, God. Uh, Oh, 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 I haven't had a chortle like that in just, I mean, whew, boy. I I enjoyed that headline a lot, actually. (laughs) This is from the same studio that... um, uh really wanted to give their players uh, pride and accomplishment um by paying microtransactions um <laughs> uh sorry um ea uh... tried to justify loot boxes as surprise mechanics that add value to the game um and they're definitely not gambling at all. No, not. they're not. They're not gambling. They are surprise mechanics, um, which led to a lot of people's responses being, you know, well, it, it's not piracy. It's just a demo I, to make sure my PC can. So, so uh, where is it? Here it is. Um, EA. They're not loot boxes. They're surprise mechanics, and they're quite ethical. And my my favorite comment was from uh, commander llama who's been on the show a couple times saying piracy it's a surprise payment method uh fuck ea yeah that's it that's all we're over time thank you so much for hanging out uh thank you to all you just nutsos for subscribing at the beginning that was quite a thank you uh seriously that it it means a lot it's really nice to to have you guys all come and hang out every week and and show up and even if you don't subscribe it's it's really nice doing this so uh thank you everyone uh it's genuine pleasure um shiver nakara thank you both
Uh, other Happy me? weekend, everybody. Other me? Yeah, I know. It's... Uh-oh. He's got split it personalities now. You and I are the best. I agree. Watch, it's not the first uh, time he's been talking to himself. No. No one else here matters. It's just you and me. I love you, too. Yes... Yes, Nakara does have a crab crawling up the back of his head. And yes, Shiver does look a, like a large bottle of water. But we don't need to tell them that. You know, it's still gay if you pull him off, right? Not at all. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Love you all. We'll see you in the verse. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Uh, yeah. Hey, next weekend's Canada Day. <laughs> next weekend is Canada Day. Whoop whoop. Uh, that said, we'll still we'll still see you next weekend. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye.